You're never gonna believe this story. So this rock frontman was exhausted from a world tour and to make matters worse, he really missed his girl. So in this burst of inspiration, he wrote an extremely vulnerable song and he was hell bent on no one ever hearing it. Now later his bandmates happened upon this very personal song and they tried to talk him into recording it for their next album. He wanted no part of it. Now this is a very heavy band, get this. He was convinced that this song would make his fans hurl. Find out what happened next and how this became one of their most legendary songs, how they got him to record it. Very interesting story coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you've ever counted down the days until your favorite artist's new album came out, you know, back in the day, when you had the world premiere video on MTV and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna love this channel. Subscribe below right now for a ticket to our daily content, the stories of the song straight from the artists. And also check out our Patreon link below to become a part of curating this important work and for another catalog of content. James Allen Hetfield, the man behind a commanding ferocity that has influenced a generation of staunch loyalists since his emergence as the front man for Metallica on their intrepid debut LP, Kill Em All, in the summer of 83. <music> Hetfield's rise to prominence began when he was barely 18, while he was a member of a garage band named Leather Charm in 1981. Hetfield answered a classified ad that uh, drummer Lars Ulrich had placed in The Recycler, a publication distributed in the LA metro area. It was to be the artistic connection uh, that forged Metallica, one of the world's most influential rock bands, locally distributed weekly in monthly magazines. They were a primary outlet that many musicians utilized and to find musicians with similar philosophies that wanted to uh, network and collaborate. Same thing with the Melody Maker out in the UK. A lot of bands came together from that. Actually, the same thing happened with another prolific heavy rock band from Southern California. You know, when Nikki Six answered an ad in The Recycler that uh, guitarist Mick Mars had placed promoting himself as a loud, rude, and aggressive guitarist for hire that, of course, led to the assembly of Motley Crue. Now, James Hetfield was born uh, in Downey, California to strict parents who were devout to the Christian science faith. His father was a truck driver. His mother sang operetta theater. Uh, as a boy, James dealt with several traumatic experiences uh, that shaped his depth as a lyricist and his tenacity as a vocalist, uh, such as the divorce of his parents, you know, when he was only 13 years old, and facing the death of his mother, who succumbed to cancer when James was just 16 years old. Music was young James's sanctuary, you know, his uh, catharsis. He learned to play a piano uh, at uh, nine years of age, and once he learned to play guitar at 14, he was on his path to rock stardom. Uh, of course, never wavered. Metallica was a force of nature from the outset. The group steadily drew in stature and notoriety from 1983 to 1988. Now, it was when they released their fourth album, Injustice for All, that eclipsed the classification of thrash metal or any other label the industry had given them. What a classic, you know, so many incredible songs. Oh, please, God, wake me. The concert tour for Injustice For All was massive, with Metallica performing in the biggest venues around the world. The band called the tour Damage Justice. And during the long run of the Damage Justice tour, James Hetfield was all alone in a hotel room, pining for his girlfriend at the time, and poured his yearning heart into a song that was solely intended to be for his ears only. It was a song that brought out vulnerability and self-reflection, helping James liberate his melancholy. Similar to the way one finds solace by you know, writing in a, a diary or a journal where you express your most private thoughts that you don't think anybody else is gonna see or hear. So close, no matter how far. So close, no matter how far. It couldn't be much more from the heart, forever trusting who we are and nothing else matters. After putting a melody to his lyrics, Hetfield was initially very reluctant to play the song for his bandmates since he felt that it was the last song anyone would want to hear from Metallica. 
But as James explained in an interview uh, with Mojo Magazine, he said, and I quote, the song I was writing wasn't about destroying things, headbanging, or bleeding for the crowd, end of quote. Now, James titled his composition, Nothing Else Matters. Nothing Else Matters revealed a side of James Hetfield the fans of Metallica had never heard before. Lars was the first band member to crusade for Nothing Else Matters. Inclusion on the album and the other three members, you know, jumped on the bandwagon from there. Still, James Hetfield had to be talked into recording the song. It was a, a risky, vulnerable song that James didn't want anyone else to hear uh, because of the song's sensitivity. He was certain that the track would make uh, Metallica fans want to hurl. Once James got over his fear, though, the track became a centerpiece of a record that manifested Metallica's desire to evolve artistically and to reach yet even a bigger audience. As we break down the history of this song, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I wear all the time. When you go to zenny.com, uh, you are able to design your glasses, the color, you know, the shape and the style. And then you can see exactly how you look before you buy with Zenny Virtual Try-On. Uh, you can see how the eyewear is going to look on your, your face, the shape of your face, make sure that it matches your face with Zenny's virtual mirror feature. Try it today. Now, according to super producer Bob Rock, who produced the Black Album, the Metallica quartet of uh, Heffield, Ulrich, Hammett, and uh, Jason Newstead made it clear that they wanted to focus on song structure and uh, you know, to create a fuller, uh, more versatile sound. That desire was earnestly manifested when James Hetfield approached Rock and played him Wicked Game, <laughs> song by Chris Isaac. He had asked the producer to help him to emulate Chris Isaac's dreamy vocal, you know, kind of that Roy Orbison feel. Hetfield told Rock that he really didn't sing, he yelled, and he wanted to mix up his vocal technique in Nothing Else Matters and on another ballad uh, that was to be placed on the Black Album titled The Unforgiven. So the James wanted to become a singer, in his words. Uh, Rock pledged to Hetfield that he would get him what he called a great vocal so that he wouldn't have to double the vocal track. In fact, Bob Rock said, what you hear in Chris Isaac's voice are the nuances of singing. He isn't doubled on that recording. What a wicked game. So Bob Rock set up a booth in the studio for James to execute an authentic, heartfelt vocal that he was very comfortable with, and boy did he ever deliver. Rock recounted that uh, James got better every day and became a great singer, and I agree. Hetfield's performance on Nothing Else Matters, uh, it's just a, a tender, transparent departure, but there are you know, dynamic flares of his trademark growl that gives the track a steadfast Metallica validation. Never care for what they do. It's a, just a sensational performance of dynamics and, of course, vulnerabilities. It's just as Hetfield says in the song, never open myself this way. Never open myself this way. And I love how he attacks the line, uh, trust I seek and I find in you. Trust I seek and I find in you. You can absolutely feel the integrity and the sincerity in his delivery. I also love the harmony part. Uh, the song just levels up like every 30 seconds. And by the end, it's so much beauty that your soul can scarcely take it all in. Let's be clear, Nothing Else Matters is a perfect song. Haters be damned, you know? You don't have to be a metal fan or a Metallica fan to recognize this. If you don't like this song, you really don't like music. It's just pure and inspired, both the music and the lyrics. The lyrics are just poetry to the beholder. It's, it's a song for the ages, as is the album that it came from. More on that in a second. But let's talk about the music for a second. Nothing Else Matters was one of the rare Metallica tracks where Kirk Hammett did not uh, perform the, the lead guitar parts. It was Hetfield who composed the guitar structure and fittingly executed the licks for Nothing Else Matters. Uh, Hetfield's melody puts a heavy pulse on the first and fourth quavers of each bar on the track, flowing from finger-picked chords to power chords. 
and rages into an inspired bluesy solo before returning to the introspective intro on the fade out. Yeah. Nothing Else Matters is a true testament to the importance you know, of being honest with your feelings and, and not being afraid to expose your emotions. It was, as I said, uh, just a state of openness, a state of vulnerability, not heard in quite the same way before. For Hetfield, letting it all hang out there with his feeling was worth the gamble. The gamble that you take when you tell somebody how you truly feel about them, no matter how much fear you have, that person is either gonna step on your heart with spikes on, as, as Hetfield describes it, or they're gonna put their heart right next to yours. Hetfield was proud that he, that he took the chance and he wrote from the heart with no holds barred. James was especially gratified by the way Metallica fans reacted to a ballad that he penned that meant so much to him. I mean, for the fans, Nothing Else Matters has built a much bigger purpose that goes far beyond an unveiling between only two people. As one of the highlights found on the Black Album, Nothing Else Matters has become a song about connecting with your higher power, you know, whatever or whoever that may be. In an interview in 2008, James recalled going to a Hells Angels clubhouse in New York where the members showed him a film that they had made about a fallen brother with Nothing Else Matters as the music soundtrack for the piece. Uh, it was just an incredible wow moment for James when he realized that the song means so much more than just being you know, homesick and, and missing your girlfriend. He had hit upon you know, a universal feeling there. Over the years, Hetfield and the band have dedicated Nothing Else Matters to Metallica's multitude of faithful fans when they perform the song in concert. As James puts it, it's for you to decide what matters in your life. Life is ours, we live it our way, all these words I don't just say, and nothing else matters. And nothing else matters. It was one of several masterpieces on the Black Album, the album, uh, it really told the masses what early adopters had always known since Metallica's first album. This was a game-changing band that really changed everything from the 80s and beyond. To me, the Black Album, it's the equivalent of a perfect game in baseball. It is just flawless. I've shared this before, I think I have, uh, but the Black Album was one of those albums that really hit me uh, it hit me in the face like a cannonball, you know, back in the day when it came out. Uh, I had just been swept off my feet by New Wave and Alternative. You know, the few years prior, I had truly discovered bands like Depeche Mode, The Cure, and The Smiths and the like, and I was just obsessed with that kind of music. And, and I really dismissed the Black Album. That is, until I was sitting in my friend's room, you know, I had a brand new stereo with a, a multi-disc player, and all of a sudden the guitar part of Inner Sandman began to ring out. Within two minutes, I was begging his older brother to drive me to the store so I could get my own copy. Uh, problem was I only had eight bucks from a job that I had that summer moving sprinkler part and the CD was gonna be at least 15 or $16. At that time, I was spending every cent that I had on music. You know, I just bought a Toad the Wet Sprocket Fear, I remember. I also had to save some money because you know the Pixies, and Red Hot Chili Peppers, Tribe Called Quest, Soundgarden, and Erasure. They all had new albums coming out at that moment. I tell you, what a time that was. I don't mean to sound like you know the old man all the time, but kids today, they'll just never understand or experience music like the way we did, where it was your whole life. I had to have the Black Album. So I did the only thing that I could at that moment. I sold my uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Upper Deck baseball card for almost nothing. Now this was back when baseball cards, especially the Griffey Upper Deck Rookie, were you know, it was pure gold but I didn't care. I had to scrape together the money to get this perfect record. I remember listening to, to every song and just being transformed emotionally, especially Nothing Else Matters. And The Unforgiven. Wherever I may roam. And of course, I understand, man. I mean, Enter Sandman broke boundaries like a fiend. I say that all the time. It's true. It opened up so many roads for Metallica, the Black Album, uh, the equivalent of a number one hit, really. 
became a platinum selling single, more than a million copies. It was even nominated for a Grammy Best Rock Song at the 34th Grammy Awards in 92. One of the most puzzling moments in the history of the Grammys, Enter Sandman lost for Best Rock Song in favor of uh, The Soul Cages by Steam. I mean, nothing against Sting. He's one of my favorite artists ever, but Enter Sandman was a game changer. It really was. Like I said, it opened the door to, to other great songs on the album, including Nothing Else Matters for the Masses to discover. Nothing Else Matters was the third single off the Black album. It climbed to number 11 on the Billboard Mainstream Rock chart. How was it not number one? It broke the top 10 throughout Europe. It was number nine in Germany, and number four in Italy, number five in Spain, six in UK, and number one in Denmark. And the fourth single overall to garner crossover success for Metallica hit number 34 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 92. Even though Enter Sandman set the tone for the Black Album, years later, decades later, Nothing Else Matters has equaled that song in some ways. It surpassed it in terms of success. I mean, Nothing Else Matters it's about to surpass 1 billion views on YouTube. Enter Sandman uh, has about three quarters of that. Streaming wise, they're kind of like neck and neck. Oh, yeah. I really believe it's the integrity of James Hetfield's performance on Nothing Else Matters. I mean, his heart felt sincerity that creates an epic and undeniable listening experience. It's also uh, the orchestral arrangement. The dramatic, sweeping orchestral arrangements for Nothing Else Matters were developed by award-winning composer Michael Kamen, who would uh, later go on to collaborate with the band on their album s and uh, which in that context was an abbreviation for Symphony and Metallica. Brilliant way they put that together. It was a live recording with Metallica performing alongside the San Francisco Symphony. That was in 1999, a brilliant work. And nothing else matters. All in all, nothing else matters. It achieves a musical high that when you really listen to the song, I mean, when you put on a pair of great headphones and just lose yourself in the music, you know, lose yourself in the elegance of this metal masterpiece. It's like you begin to understand what Hepfield is explaining lyrically. I mean, you'll think about your life, your choices, uh, your most meaningful relationships. I'm getting deep here, but uh, I found that in those innermost thoughts inspired by the message of the song, you can let go of the past, you know, let go of the mistakes, the loss. And from there, you can essentially reprioritize and embrace what's most important, what will truly bring you joy. As James Hetfield said so eloquently, nothing else matters. Leave us a comment about this life-changing masterwork from Metallica. What is your favorite track on the Black Album, your favorite album from Metallica? What are your memories and thoughts on Nothing Else Matters? Let us know in the comments. Uh, we'd really like to hear it. If you like our content, we do invite you to be a permanent part of our channel by hitting the subscribe button and do check out our other catalog of content. Support our mission on Patreon of keeping this great music alive in the memories. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.